Hello, this is Hakuna Bean, and I am here with some more of a really interesting subreddit that I rarely visit, but have actually gained a great interest in, called Life of Norman, the most Norman, <laughs> the most normal person. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into this. Once again, I'm on Reddit, but I refuse to log in because I don't feel like it. Oh, this one's been pinned. Meet Norman. <sighs> oh dear. <sighs> Meet Norman. Welcome to silence. Welcome to our slash life of Norman. Whether you're brand new to the community, you've been visiting for a while, or you were are somehow born here, we want to take a moment to introduce you to Norman. Norman is a balding middle-aged man who lives with his cat, who is also named Norman. He was once married but is now divorced. He has an adult son who has long since moved away. Norman is known to muddle through everyday life, but he can also go on grand adventures, provided that he remains himself throughout the entire narrative. You see, there's a stark important difference between a story about Norman and a story about a guy who physically resembles or shares a name with Norman. Norman is not depressed anxious, sociopathic, or suffering from any other mental malady, simply by virtue of the fact that he's entirely too simple-minded. He isn't dumb, mind you, he just gives away old in a way which often leads him to quietly inconfident yet sometimes absurd conclusions. For example, no one might decide to go for a stroll in the park. They discover that his usual route is blocked by hot dog cart. Rather than walk around the obstacle, he would patiently wait for it to move, continue on its way, they'd be vaguely irritated upon discovering that it's a tent destination. A cart that sells hot dogs with huge amounts of sauerkraut isn't present at its usual location. He could then experience a flash of epiphany, smile to himself, and triumphantly strut back to where he had come, having realized that he could purchase his lunch from the other cart that he'd seen. Upon finding that it too had vanished, Norman's disappointment might be tempered by a sense of relief, not only would the universe of right itself, but I wouldn't have to eat that awful sauerkraut either. I mean, why go there if you don't like sauerkraut? Whatever. No one can find himself in virtually any situation or set of circumstances, but he is always Norman. He has no deep regrets, no lofty aspirations, and no far-reaching concerns. If only because he lives in a perpetual state of emotional now. His mood never rises beyond only please and never falls beneath annoyed. A Zen master meaning Norman might come away feeling envious or impressed, whereas Norman would briefly contemplate the appeal of wearing a robe. If he decides to call his son, he doesn't feel sad when the boy doesn't pick up, he just wonders if he dialed the wrong number, then refrains from trying again, lest he bother the stranger on the other end. Norman always tries to do the right thing, and he's generally satisfied that he he has, and any negative reactions are cause for muted curiosity rather than concern, because they must have been fronted by something unrelated. Norman, on the other hand, might go out of berserk for no reason at all, because yes, cats have a tendency to do that. Oh yes, the cat. I almost forgot about the cat existing. Not sure been in the first video. <sighs> Norman finds a newly expired bag of chips. After the morning rush at work, work was over, which was always the case with his emails, Norman decided he was feeling peckish. After all, He'd had a small breakfast that morning, and 
tried to play mind over matter so he wouldn't snack. That hadn't worked. Laura tried to avoid the charity snack box in the lunchroom, but there was one bag of chips left in there that had been especially avoiding, and that avoidance had created an increase in Norman's chip lust. Today was the day. Norman headed over to the snack box with a dollar bill in hand. He lifted a bag of chips with enormous excitement, which was quickly dashed. The best before date was in only three days. Norman flipped and fluffed in his mind. This far means nothing. It was almost expected. These chips will taste gross. You wouldn't want to make yourself sick. Norman stood there for a full three minutes thinking about whether or he should eat the chips or not. So he walked past and said, Oh hey, those chips are still there? They've been sitting there for a few months now. And that's what made Norman decide to not eat the chips. He walked back to his desk and sat down. His stomach grumbled. It's only two hours till lunchtime, he muttered to both himself and his gullet. Those two hours would seem very long. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> Norman has a lousy trip. Norman and Lisa were on their way to Tesco to buy sandwiches, chatting about that morning's team meetings, when Norman's shoe had caught on that broken paving stone near the post box. Hey, I've heard of some VTuber fighting their manager in Tesco parking lots. I'm not gonna say who. Norman had nearly tripped over or this bit of paving too many times to out over the years. He got advice to it and uh, normally adopted a funny sort of shuffle along his, his stretch, but the team meeting had been particularly lively today and he forgot. He was particularly engrossed in Lisa's description of just how much money the IT department had put in for the upcoming fiscal year to replace all of their office PCs for the fifth time in ten years. Meanwhile, the graphic design department, who actually need the computing powder, However, are still having to stoke the coal furnace to power their- Whoa! Norman! Norman was on his hands and knees on the pavement. After a moment, he let out a swear, so powerful the air took on a bluish tone. Lisa's ears turned, briefly turned red, but her first aid at work training took over and she attempted to create a perimeter around her, her casualty by herself. It was a, 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 a busy pedestrian area, but luckily several other people had seen him go down and stopped a respectful distance away. He rolled over, muttering and mincing oaths, and after a moment sat up. His khakis were already a tiny bit red over his knee, where, but he was rubbing his shoulder. Oof, that was not fun. This is not fun. He grumbled by way of reply when she advised him to say see you until he was ready. Hey, let's head for back to the uh, building. I'll just try for an ice pack, Lisa said definitively. <sighs> Now let's continue over to Tesco, said Norman. I'll buy a bag of frozen peas or whatever ice cream vegetable is cheapest. What are you talking about? Frozen peas are the best, retorted Lisa while Norman slowly made his way to his feet, wincing. No way, they're all wrinkly and dry and funny colors, Norman replied. He clocked Lisa's expression and quickly added, At least the way my mom did them. I haven't had frozen peas since I left home. No, it's what meant to your mom, as I'm sure she worked hard, but she didn't do them. Alright, in a glass as dish with a lid, 30 seconds into the microwave, boom, seemed to perfection. Norman stopped rubbing his shoulder from him on an outward microwave. No kidding. Lisa made the a girl guide's salute. 
On my honor. Well, all right. Maybe I'll give it a, a, he's a chance. <sighs> that does seem like a pretty lousy trip. Oh, we almost got annoyed by an ad. Wouldn't that be lame? Oh no, am I out of stories already? Um, Norman struggles with inflation. <sighs> Norman went to his local supermarket and began filling his car with his usual staples. After the produce section, and he came upon dairy. Six egg slots for a dozen eggs. Goodness gracious, that's twice as much as normal. I have to find something different to put over Norman's kibble. He went to the pantry aisle and decided that add lentils with good protein substitute for the eggs. Not quite as much protein, but less cholesterol, he thought. At home, Norman cooked the lentil, was according to the package directions, and when it's cooled, added them to Norman's bowl of kibble. Norman looked at the dish, gave it a few sniffs, and went to the basement to search for a mouse. Norman tasted a bit of the lentils left in the pan. Oh dear, I'll, I will have to find another way to uh, adjust my budget. It offset the higher price of eggs. Norman rewashes his laundry. Such a busy Monday, Norman mutters in frustration. He flops his keys on the kitchen counter after returning home, and Roger enjoys the clanking sound they make as they fall. He searches his quiet home for some relief and is met with tragedy. I've got to put the laundry in the dryer last night. I guess I have to throw and wash again. Exhausted, Norman falls asleep to the worrying of the spin cycle. His deck will probably be stiff in the morning after dozing in his recliner, but he can't be mad at his favorite chair. <sighs> hmm. Norman's night. Norman came home from work an hour ago. A slight pain in his elbow annoyed him when he flipped the pages of the book. It was caused by the monotone job he kept. Every day for the past 20 years, he would sit in the same chair by the same machine and made sure that it did its job of the way it was designed. To put the yogurt into hu in huge containers, the containers were picked up by a truck and later shipped by train and where they would be put in smaller boxes. Norman always wished that he worked there instead. It wouldn't be as boring, he thought. The sound of the grandfather clock ticked loudly as it does when everything else is silent. Norman sent coffee from his mug. I love my cat was printed on it. His brother bought him that mug for his birthday. The coffee started to get cold and the book was, uh, was of no interest to read. Norman fell asleep and was suddenly made to wake from a loud thump. Like so he sighed, put on his shoes and entirely dressed in his pajamas and went outside to investigate. <sighs> Not again, Norman thought, a shoe lies underneath its window. The only reason that someone had thrown it at its window. He, His eyes knows a pile of dirt in his yard. It was recently made. His cat had been out all night to greet him. Meowed and struck against his leg. It ran inside. <sighs> Norman felt unmotivated to dig up the, buried, the male buried in his yard. It was neighbor kids that you used to find much pleasure in frequently in bury in high Norman's mail, especially his bills and other important letters. Norman decided to deal with that pile in the morning and head back inside to fall asleep again.
Hmm. I think that's enough for now. And that was Life of Norman. I think we've read enough for one day. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I think I'm going to be doing a few more videos that are more on Reddit and the SP Wiki for now. Just to give myself a little refresher and a little bit of a break from things that are only possible in anomalous fantasy worlds like the SCP Foundation or the Backrooms. And of course the possibility of them being in the same world which I don't even want to touch with a 15 foot pole. If you have any suggestions to, for what to read, I would love to hear them in the comments. For now, I'll do uh, uh, the uh, subreddits that I know uh, uh, that I enjoy listening to, so I'm quite sure I'll enjoy reading them. I'll see you tomorrow with more or cringe from Reddit. Goodbye!